You came this close to getting away with the perfect crime. For 45 years, I thought everything about us was normal until the day I turned you in. Oh, the questions they started asking. And when I started giving answers, their eyes got big. They took notes, lots of notes. And they turned on the video camera. That's when I started to suspect. You and me, not so normal after all. It's quite a list of charges against you. Extortion, fraud, stalking, kidnapping, attempted murder. How did I not see what you were doing? How did all of this somehow become normal? Oh yeah, brainwashing. Nothing's worse than making mistakes. Nothing's worse than failure. The rules I've lived by as far back as I can remember. The rules you so perfectly taught me and I so perfectly followed. <coughs> Mother taught me her rules when I was little. Always level off the measuring cup with the back of a knife like this. Perfect. The salad fork goes on the left. Oh, no, straight. Perfect. Dinner must be served at 6 o'clock, not 5.59. Not 6.01, <laughs> 6 p.m. Hot food's hot, cold food's cold. Perfect. At least I thought they were mother's rules. When I was in eighth grade, I added a new rule of my own, or so I thought. <coughs> I was so excited to qualify to be in geometry class and walk from the junior high building all the way up to the high school. I was good at math, just like my Nana. But you couldn't let me just enjoy math. No, you're the one that made me add the new rule. 100% on every test. No errors. Minus zero. Perfect. And you know me, I were the little rule follower. I did exactly what you said. Because after all, nothing's worse than making mistakes. And nothing's worse than failing. I took a ream of paper to every test. Worked every single problem, not once, not twice, but three times. Take the entire test, turn the pages over. Take the entire test again, turn those pages over. Take the entire test one more time, then turn all the pages over and compare. As long as nothing's different, I know I followed the rule. Minus zero. Perfect. You extended the minus zero rule the day I missed a point. One whole quarter of minus zero. But then I made the same stupid negative error all three times I took the first test, the second quarter. When I saw that minus one in red at the top of the page, I ran behind the gym and just cried for hours. And then I didn't eat for the rest of the day. That's how the minus zero rule became the size zero. No, I didn't manage to eat nothing. But I came awfully close for days, weeks, and months. You know, it is amazing how much self-control you can have when you really believe that nothing's worse than making mistakes, and nothing's worse than failure. When I finally slipped into those size zero jeans with room to spare, when I could lay a ruler flat across my hip bones with nothing, not an iota of fat sticking out, you told me that I will be For almost 45 years, you've been saying that you're perfecting me. I believed your promises. I followed all your rules. I worked my heart out for you. In fact, my friend Kathy is always telling me, Sherry, you're the hardest working person I know. And I used to think that was the greatest possible compliment. But earlier this year, I started asking myself exactly what's been the goal of all my hard work and exactly what has it gotten me. And you know the answer I've come up with is nothing. Literally nothing. Since nothing's worse than making mistakes and nothing's worse than failure, my one life goal has been to avoid one thing, criticism. You've made me so terrified of criticism, 
I've striven, strive. I work my butt off for nothing and been thrilled to achieve it. I get to the end of a project or a class or a meeting, whatever, and my one measure of success. Any criticism? Nope. Nothing. Perfect. You got mother right after I was born, didn't you? All these years, I thought it was my fault. She was so unhappy. No matter how hard I tried, and I know about trying hard, nothing I did ever made her truly happy. You have held her captive for my entire life. Well, almost. Alzheimer's disease has done in these last five years what I failed to do in my first 40. She's happy now. She's escaped you but only by leaving the rest of us far, far behind. You almost got away with the perfect crime. And I would have let you. You'd, you'd already taken everything from Mother and left her with nothing. You'd already taken everything from me and left me with nothing. Oh, you should have stopped with us. Everyone says my daughter and I are scary alike. But her artistic talents clearly come from her father. I can barely draw a straight line, even with a ruler. When she was little, I tried to teach her her shapes. I drew what I thought looked like a circle, and she stared at it, <laughs> stared at it, looked up at me and said, what's that, Mama? When she was about three, she started collecting beanie babies and then drawing them. She went through a ream of paper using markers, colored markers. Mm. Not pencil, no eraser, no sketching first. Just bold, bright, permanent markers. And she was so excited with each one. Look, Mama, look what I've been drawing. Now, almost every one of her drawings had these extra lines that didn't really belong to the Beanie Baby. It was like she drew Jabber the Parrot, and she drew his tail that way, and then realized, oh, no, actually it goes this way. But the extra lines didn't belong, but she just ignored them kept on drawing. She didn't crumple her drawings up and throw them away. Instead, she plastered her whole door with them and then her, her entire bedroom. I used to stare at her drawings when she was asleep. In awe and envy. She did so effortlessly what I never could. She made mistakes and moved on. She failed, but focused on creation. She didn't know that nothing's worse than making mistakes, and nothing's worse than failure. And I swore I would never let you teach her your rules. But then she came home from college that weekend. And when I picked up her sketch pad and looked through it, every page was plain. Zero drawings when she's already always had so many. There was no mom, mom, look what I've been drawing. Nothing at all for three months. And when I asked her, Chicky, what happened? She told me she'd worn through dozens of erasers. Because you know, mom, nothing's worse than making mistakes. And she torn page after page, crumpled and trashed them because, you know, mom, nothing's worse than failure. And all I could think was, no, no, 